180 years. It's a prospective uh, study from Italy. Good evening to all the present. I, um, I will present the results of, of a study we have conducted uh, in Italy on very old patients uh, treated with uh, oral anticoagulants, um, old oral anticoagulants with warfarin. Um, the, the, the reason um, uh, that conducted us to uh, uh, design this study uh, is that we have a, a, a large diffusion, as, as you know, of atrial fibrillation, and uh, uh, it is estimated to double the number of, of patients on atrial fibrillation as the population ages, because uh, the problem of atrial fibrillation is a great increase uh, with age. Um, we have a prevalence uh, of 0.5% uh, uh, among patients um, uh, of 40 to uh, 50 years, and the, um, the incidence uh, increases to 15% among patients of 80 years old. Um, the problem of atrial fibrillation is the higher uh, risk of uh, death, as we heard, uh, um, uh, I've just heard, and uh, uh, principally of stroke and other thromboembolic events. And uh, it's estimated that among patients aged over than 80 years, uh, about one quarter of strokes are attributable to uh, atrial fibrillation. Uh, prevention of stroke on atrial fibrillation relies on antithrombotic therapy. And uh, um, in the last 20 years, it became uh, evident that the use of oral anticoagulants in patients with atrial fibrillation is associated with a, um, a reduction of a stroke that is calculated in 67%. It's a huge um, percentage of reduction obtained with this treatment. Uh, but uh, the, the problem is uh, for physicians or uh, for, uh, for patients uh, too uh, that uh, anticoagulants uh, um, are um, related with hemorrhage, with an increase of hemorrhage that um, is the, uh, the principal uh, um, fear for patients, uh, for physicians also. And uh, um, what we clearly know now is that, uh, that the increase of stroke risk uh, is um, um, is uh, uh, going uh, uh, together with the increase of bleeding. Uh, in other words, uh, age increases the risk of stroke, but age increases also the risk of bleeding when you are treated with an anticoagulant. Uh, then this is probably one of the principal reasons for the under-treatment uh, of patients that uh, uh, will merit uh, uh, treatment uh, for, for stroke prevention. And uh, uh, um, all over um, the countries, uh, it's reported uh, a, slow a, 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 a reduced number of patients treated uh, uh, with water, with, with indication for warfarin that are uh, really treated. Uh, for this reason, we um, designed this prospective uh, uh, observational study that was conducted uh, um, in um, 27 centers uh, for uh, the management of anticoagulation um, in, uh, in Italy and uh, that um, was uh, um, directed to patients, uh, to naive patients, patients that uh, have uh, treated for the first time with oral anticoagulants, that they started their treatment after the age, uh, the age of 80. Uh, we recruited uh, more than 4,000 patients. Uh, three quarters of them were on treatment for atrial fibrillation. Uh, the mean age of our population was 84 years, and patients were followed for uh, more than uh, 9,600 uh, uh, years of, of uh, treatment. The, um, um, 
uh, incidence uh, of uh, the rate of incidence of events is calculated usually as uh, the number of events uh, uh, in relation to time of exposure to the treatment. Uh, in, um, uh, when we analyze characteristics of our patients, uh, we um, found um, uh, a data that, uh, um, um, results that are, have been reported previously, but um, I, I, I want to um, focus it for, for you. And uh, we, have, we have seen that uh, about 10% of our patients had severe renal uh, failure, but um, and I think it is the, the more important data, 60% uh, more than 60% of a moderate uh, uh, renal failure and this is um, in, in line um, with the fact that patients uh, getting older are going in a, a, a progressive reduction in renal function. Uh, we had uh, we recorded 179 major bleeding events. That means uh, less than two uh, events uh, every 100 um, years uh, of exposure to the to warfarin, and this is a, a quite low incidence in uh, relation to uh, several um, studies. Uh, um, uh, previously uh, published, uh, but uh, in particular among uh, uh, so um, old uh, patients. And uh, the rate of intracranial bleeding was 0 0.55. Uh, um, uh, we had a rate of death for bleeding that was 0 0.27. Uh, patients were followed uh, during uh, their treatment uh, by uh, devoted centers uh, and uh, they, mm, we had uh, the possibility to reach a good quality of anticoagulation. Uh, centers uh, as a routine practice perform patient education uh, with the, including the purposes of treatment, uh, risk for complications uh, and information about the uh, uh, laboratory controls. Uh, Family members and caregivers were also involved in the educational program. Um, uh, patients uh, receive um, a, a detailed prescription of daily um, dosage and indication for subsequent visit because um, it is known that anti uh, the, the response to anticoagulant treatment is highly uh, variable uh, um, in, among individuals. So we conclude that uh, uh, to date we have a few information for the effects of new anticoagulants uh, uh, that uh, we have heard uh, many things, many interesting things uh, also during this, uh, this is Congress, uh, but uh, few data are available for very old subjects uh, with high prevalence of renal failure. On the contrary, especially after uh, the publishing uh, of, this, uh, of the results of the EPICA study of this study, become evident that very old patients uh, and frail patients uh, without a fibrillation cl uh, clearly benefit from the old anticoagulants uh, when treatment is adequately managed. Thank you. Thank you very much. Any questions? Um, do you have, did you have a study protocol? And which were the in exclusion criteria? Whom did you not include? Uh, this is an observational study. And uh, the, the, um, uh, we um, enrolled patients uh, that started treatment after the age of ages uh, of 80s, uh, so they did not uh, uh, have uh, um, exposed to uh, warfarin before. This is the, the first point. Uh, the uh, exclusion were other indications different from uh, atrial fibrillation or um, uh, venous thromboembolism, so we excluded patients with an intended therapeutic range higher than uh, two, uh, two, three, 
so uh, target more than two and a half uh, of INR and uh, uh, no, other, uh, contra no other exclusion. So we had uh, also included patients with double therapy with uh, um, aspirin or uh, clopidogrel, and uh, we include uh, also patients that had uh, had before uh, a um, the, um, major hemorrhage. Okay, thank you. Yes, please, happy. The very old people are taking a lot of pills normally, uh, and it is known that warfarin has a lot of interactions. You don't have problems with the very old at this point? Uh, we looked for that. Um, uh, we have more than 60% of patients uh, of atrial fibrillation patients. The percentage is, less, uh, is quite less among patients treated for venous thromboembolism. They are taking more than three other um, uh, drugs. And uh, uh, this was a, a, a risk factor for uh, developing a, a bleeding event during treatment. Uh, even if uh, when we adjusted the, the, uh, the in, a, in a multivariate model, uh, this uh, um, is not confirmed as an independent uh, risk factor. So this is the last question, please. Uh, Ed Sussman, that page today. Um, the, you found about two incidents of, bleed, of bleeding incidents in uh, 100 <coughs> patient years. What would have you considered? Um, what, what would what if you considered a, a an excessive bleeding rate? Because you, you didn't have a control group here. Mm. Um. This is uh, one of, of, of the points that debated. In the RELY study that have been recently published on uh, the Bigatran, uh, the group um, uh, treated with warfarin had a, a, an incidence rate of 3.4 if I, I correctly. Um, uh, so uh, we, in, in patients in the RELI have a, a, a mean age of a 72, seven, uh, 73, so 10 years uh, younger than our patients. Uh, so I think that uh, our um, incidence is, is, is uh, uh, is low, uh, but is um, uh, I, I think that the strength of this uh, uh, paper is that this is real practice. This is what is normally happens uh, in, uh, in in real practice uh, in uh, in anticoagulation services dedicated to the um, uh, surveillance of patients. So please, one short question, short answer. If there are more questions, please, after the, the press conference. You said that you had two bleedings per 100 patient years in the old population. How many strokes do you uh, avoid treating with oil anticoagulants and, uh, and, and uh, anticoagulants with the old, in the old people? Uh, I cannot uh, answer uh, correctly to your uh, to, to your question because I don't have an, a population or control uh, not treated, but uh, I, um, I and this is an observational study uh, on what uh, is uh, the, the 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 real life. Uh, it was. Uh, um, it is um, indicated by gui international guidelines uh, to treat patients uh, with warfarin when they have uh, high risk of stroke. Uh, I, can, uh, I can imagine that uh, I have prevented uh, um, um, a large amount of stroke, uh, 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 but um, um, uh, it, it, it is uh, uh, believed that uh, the number needed to treat is one in 35 hmm? uh, for patient uh, uh, not at, uh, uh, with a medium risk. Uh, our population is quite high. Probably the number needed to treat is uh, 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 smaller in this group, and uh, in, uh, in uh, 9,000 years of, of treatment, several strokes could be prevented. Okay, mm -hmm. thank you very much.